Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today we're doing the video you have all been waiting for, testing seafoam in a car engine. This is the seafoam spray that comes with a tube that goes into your intake right before the throttle body so you don't risk hydrolocking your engine. You also don't need to remove any vacuum lines. Now to see if the engine got cleaned, I'll be using my borescope camera to look into the engine through the spark plug holes. This will give us a undeniable before and after, so we'll visually see if the carbon in the combustion chamber got removed and if the piston got cleaned. I've done a lot of fuel system cleaner tests and I got a lot more to try, but I want to make it clear. Just like in my other fuel system cleaner tests, I'm not sponsored and I'm not getting paid. I went out and bought all these cleaners with my own money. The results will speak for themselves and I'm just as curious and excited as you guys to see if this stuff works or not. If you want to see my other fuel system cleaner tests, I'll put the links to those videos in the description and you can check them out after this video. So let's stop talking and get before footage of each cylinder, starting with cylinder number one. Okay, going down into cylinder number one, we'll check it out. The carbon buildup in this cylinder doesn't look bad at all, but there is some carbon buildup, so we'll be able to check it out. If we go in closer, you could see the difference between the top of the piston and where it has carbon on it. At the top here, you could see more carbon. So there's enough carbon in here for us to test the seafoam out. So let's go from cylinder one to cylinder number two. Okay, in cylinder number two, again, similar amount of carbon in similar places. Take a look at all the carbon around the edge of the piston. There's not too much in the center, but around the edges there's a lot. We don't need to talk too much about this cylinder. Let's go from cylinder two to cylinder three. Okay, in cylinder three, again, similar amount of carbon in similar places. Go from cylinder three to cylinder four. And cylinder four, again, carbon on the outsides. There's a decent amount of carbon up top. You can see there's another up close look at the carbon, especially around the edge of the piston. And that's what cylinder 4 looks like. So that's what the engine looks like before seafoam. Now let's use seafoam and see if it removes any of the carbon. So here's the seafoam that I used in a lawnmower video. And here's the stuff that we're using today. The seafoam that we're using today has a red hose and has a spray top. The red hose attaches to the seafoam like this. And this allows us to attach it right before the throttle body. So let's go do that. So we're going to take off the rubber intake hose right here and slip this right in. Loosen the hose clamp and that allows us to move this and put our red tube into the intake. Close up the intake hose and tighten it down so it's sealed. And now we can spray the seafoam right into the intake and it'll get sucked into the engine. So we're going to start the car and then hold it up to 1500 RPMs. So you want to make sure that your car is fully warmed up and at operating temperature before you spray the seafoam in. So we're warmed up and we're ready to go. Okay, I just started spraying the seafoam and the bottle says it takes about five minutes to completely empty. So get your pressing fingers comfortable. It takes about 10 seconds for the exhaust to start smoking, but then you can really see it. We'll skip ahead so you don't have to watch five minutes of me spraying the seafoam. And when we're low on seafoam, hold the nozzle down to spray and shut the engine off. And once the engine shuts off, let go of the nozzle. Now I'll remove the red seafoam nozzle the same way we put it in. Unscrew the hose clamp, loosen the rubber intake, and remove the nozzle. Don't forget to tighten the hose clamp again to prevent any vacuum leaks. So there's barely any seafoam left, and I would say we used about 90% of it. Now we're going to let the car sit for 5 to 10 minutes, and after 5 to 10 minutes, we'll start her up and let the car run until there isn't any smoke left. There should be a decent amount of smoke now, which is good. This will clear up. Give the engine a few revs to break up any of those carbon deposits. And now let's go for a ride. The seafoam instructions say to drive aggressively to remove any remaining carbon deposits. So let's get a good run in. Nice. Just really push that engine, get that sea foam through, break up all the carbon, and let's see what we get. This car's got some kick to it. What year is it? It's a 08, 08. it's an 08 Honda Civic SI. So we're back and we're waiting for the engine to cool off so I could put my camera inside the engine to see if seafoam actually worked. 
In the meantime, let's take a quick look at these spark plugs. This is a big question that comes up, and as you can see, the plugs are not fouled, and they look the same as before we added the seafoam, which is good. Now let's take a look into the engine. The moment of truth, here we go. Any guesses? Okay, this is pretty exciting. Cylinder one. This is what it looks like after the seafoam, but we're gonna have to pull up a before. So let's check out the before. That's the before. Now I'm gonna flash the before and after. Now let's compare the two. Now right away, if you look at the edge of the pistons, compare the before and after, you could see a lot of the carbon near the edge of the piston was removed. You could see the ring around the edge on the after that is shiny, and in the before, there's all carbon buildup. In addition, in the locations that are circled, we saw some carbon reduction from before and after. Now this is only five minutes to sea foam. It's not like a head gasket leak, so the piston heads aren't squeaky clean. But finally, we got something where we saw results. So this is cylinder one. We have a positive result. Let's go from cylinder one and go into cylinder two. Okay, this is after sea foam, so let's get a before. That's before. Let's get before and after. Okay, now let's check this out. Again, if we look at the edge of the piston, you could see the edge of the pistons got cleaned. In all the circled areas, there was cleaning when we compare before and after. And at the bottom right side of the piston is where we have a nice amount of carbon that was removed. I don't know exactly how it works, if it slowly dissolves it or if it breaks off in chunks, one would hope it slowly gets dissolved. But again, cylinder two, we saw positive results before and after. So let's get out of cylinder two and let's check out the before and after for cylinder three. So this is what it looks like after the seafoam. Let's check out the before. Now let's get a comparison. All right, again, if we look at the edge of the piston, similar trend, carbon was cleaned up. And then if you look at the areas that are circled, that's areas that have carbon removed. The bottom left-hand corner had a lot of carbon removal. You could see that, same with the bottom right. So now let's get out of cylinder three and check out the last cylinder, cylinder four. This is the after, that's the before. Let's get a comparison. So this is interesting. If you look at the bottom of the piston head and before and after, check out the after. You can see that there's a light coat of something. I don't know if it's the oil from the seafoam, if it's carbon or whatever, but you see it there and you don't see it in the before. You also have a couple of these dark spots that are in the after, but they aren't in the before. Now that being said, in the before on both sides of the piston, there's a decent amount of hard carbon buildup. And in the after, that hard carbon buildup is almost all the way gone. That's where those dark spots are. So maybe that's the piston head or the carbon soaking up the oils of the seafoam, which is making it darker. I don't know. But on the left and right edges of the piston, a lot of carbon was removed. So that gives you a good idea of cylinder four. And there we go. We just saw the before and after for cylinders one through four in this straight four engine. So does seafoam actually work in a modern day car motor? Well, you could answer that yourself by looking at the before and after pictures. In all of the after shots, we saw the edge of the piston got cleaned, which is a significant result in itself because that carbon could cause friction since it's so close to the piston wall. That also makes me think that any carbon on the piston rings themselves that we couldn't see got cleaned off. We also saw a decrease in the baked on carbon in each cylinder. This Honda has 125,000 miles, just like my truck, and the fuel system cleaners that we tried in my truck haven't had results like this. Overall, I'm glad that we could finally say we found a cleaner that actually works. We followed the instructions exactly the way they're stated on the container and got results. You could come to your own conclusions, but personally, I'm really excited and I'm actually impressed. Now that we found one good fuel system cleaner, I'm getting really excited to try out other ones to see if we could find another one. Maybe something that works even better, who knows. Definitely subscribe if you haven't already for more fuel system cleaner videos as well as other how-to videos. And also give the video a thumbs up if you liked it.